Ran for 12 years, won numerous awards and became compulsive viewing in Thatcher's Britain. The often rude and risque puppets on Spitting Image regularly attracted audiences of more than 50 million people. To mark the 30th anniversary of the first programme, BBC4 is going to show a documentary celebrating its influence. We'll speak to Roger Law, who's one of the show's creators in a moment. First, let's remind ourselves of what Spitting Image was all about. Norman, speak up, man, for God's sake. Say what you mean. You're not on the platform now. <clears throat> Nigel pinched my pen. Nigel? He did, he did. Is this true? You know my policy on stealing from one's friends? Cabinet, mm. what do we call it when people go around stealing other people's property? Mm. You! A, a free market economy? <laughs> Rubbish! <laughs> what do we call it, David? Socialism. Well done. Oh, wonderful. Hooray! Henry it is, then. Yes, hooray, Henry. Yes. Good. I'll christen him. I name this baby Henry. May God bless him and all who sail in him. <laughs> we are joined now by Roger Law, one of the creators of the show. Um, so many fond memories. And actually, if you look at it, even so much afterwards, it's still really edgy. I think the other side of that coin... <laughs> <laughs> should be Thatcher. I wondered what you had in your Thatcher. pocket. <laughs> well, um, would, would the programme have been as successful as it was without Margaret mm. Thatcher? Well, she was as abrasive and as rude as the programme, mm. and so was Reagan. So we were very fortunate. Then we had Arthur Scargill. They weren't very sort of um, huggy type people, really, were they? So how did you? I mean, you know, how do you, you take their their face? You take their characteristics. How do you develop a puppet for people? How did you do it? Well, we were caricaturists, Peter and I. Mm. Uh, we were not puppeteers. Neither of us can make it's puppets. Peter Fluck. Peter Fluck, mm. yeah. So we had to find a way to make the caricatures move. And they sort of didn't, really. We had an army of people to make that show. We'd have floundered miserably. Well, we did to start with, actually. The first, the first reviews were pretty awful. Yeah, they were. Yeah, you could smell the fear on the way to the studio. And it, so it, it, it worked against the circumstances because you, you tried telling it to a couple of studios and they wouldn't have it. And finally, Central in Birmingham uh, said, said they would run it. But it involved shipping lorry loads of puppets up and down the motorway. Well, it, indeed. I mean, if there'd have been a crash, that would have been the end of Spitting Image. You know, we should send up five or six hundred puppets a week. Charles Denton was the man that got behind it and made it all possible. And the studio just completely didn't know what was happening because... They did um, crossroads, mm. and suddenly all these old hippies and lefties turned up <laughs> with these horrible puppets. You, know? um, you must have enjoyed those times, and I mean, as I say, the, the satire is edgy now and harsh then, wasn't it? How did you, you know, when you when you went about it, did you enjoy doing that to people? In some oh, way? I really wanted to do it. Yeah, I really, I, I mean, it wasn't about getting rich and famous. Uh, it was a very difficult time. If you can cast your mind back, you probably can't. I can. The country was divided. And we wanted to make the show. And we were helped in a way. It sounds awfully conceited, mm. but the opposition wasn't that great at the time. With Very people controversial like some of them. I mean, the sketch we saw at the beginning uh, involving the royal family, nobody had ever done that before, taking a pop at the royal family. They always did until Queen Victoria. And then the, they became very middle class. We sort of revived that tradition, but the tradition didn't. Did you get there. into trouble for that? Not at all. No. People were a bit shocked because. John Lloyd, the producer, wanted them to be like normal people having breakfast and talking. I mean, we didn't know they ate breakfast out of those little plastic boxes at the time, but that was the idea. Mm. The Queen was a secret communist and CD, CD, CND supporter. A CND supporter with her badge <laughs> on her there. Do you think you'd be able to get away with that now? I don't think you could ever have gotten away with it on the BBC mm. because they're meant to be unbiased, and Spitting Image was pretty biased. Um, and ITV didn't really know what they were getting into, and nor did we, to be fair, mm. because we tied a craft process to a newsroom. That's insane, because everything you're looking at is handmade yeah. and has to be got ready for camera. Mm. But are, there the are the targets the same? I mean, people always say this, that the characters in the old days, were, were especially in politics, were sort of more colourful and presented better targets. No, if you're a good caricaturist, they're always there. The difference is that, rather naively, probably, I thought Thatcher had some control over what she was doing, 
I don't think they do anymore. I think people like Cameron, they privatise so much of the country, they're in control of nothing. And the people who are in control are faceless. You don't know who they are. Um, who was your favourite? Who was your favourite person to caricature? Was, there, was it Margaret Thatcher? Are you talking about the puppets? Yes. I hated them all. You hated every them? Every single one. Did you? Why? Um, well, simply because you had to go through hell to make them. Yes. And there'd be one joke, like, Elizabeth Taylor's fat. And they'd do the joke and then, and then she never gone. came out of a box, you know. <laughs> it became a monster for you in the end, did it? Uh, well, it sort of always was. I think it was great fun if you worked at Spitting Image. Mm. I wanted to work for me. That was my ambition. But it was a nightmare because you needed so much talent to pull the show together. When I mean, you had Steve Coogan, Harry Enfield, Kate Robins, the voice artist, the writers all went on. Red Dwarf came out of Spitting Image, the, the two writers that put a lot of the jokes, Ian Hislop. And no danger of it ever coming back? Over my dead body. But it'll probably come back on the net. Somebody yeah. will do it. Right. Yeah. Roger, thanks very much.